Morning folks, welcome back. I'm in Keswick this morning. What am I here for? Am I going to visit the Pencil Museum? No. You know me, I'm fa fairly predictable. I'm off to Weatherspoons for my breakfast before a day of adventures. Come on. Right then, here we are at Buttermere. Have you been before? If not, by a watch along and you are definitely going to want to come. Uh, and if you have been here before, watch along and it'll remind you just why it's probably time for another visit. I've been here once before and uh, it left an indelible memory, which is why I'm back. So, actually, I just wanted to share it with you guys. So, it's been something I'd want to do for a while, and I would have run it, but I'm not well enough right now to run it, honestly, with the, you know, the chest pain angina. Walking it is going to be a large enough challenge today. So where are we going? Well, we're going up there. Up high style and along the ridge. It's an absolutely stunning view, as you'll see. So uh, follow along. Come on, let's get going. So I'm starting here. I've parked on the edge of the village. There is a pay and display car park at the bottom of the hill. Obviously, it does get quite busy here because it's just such a spectacular spot. Head down the hill, past this pretty old church, St. James's, and at the bottom of the hill, we're gonna take a left by the Bridge Inn. The pub is behind the hotel, dating from 1734. Last time I was here, I had a meal here, it was very nice. Also note there's a cafe on the left hand side. And up ahead, you'll see there's a bus stop, so you could arrive here by bus. In fact, I was stuck behind a coach down in possibly tiny lanes for about the last five miles of my trip here today. Just follow the well-marked path. It'll take you right down to the water's edge. And wow, is it beautiful. Even if all you do is come to Buttermere and walk down to the water's edge and sit on that rock and just soak up the atmosphere, you won't be disappointed. It really is beautiful.
We'll meet this stream again further up the hill. There's no path beside it. Cross the bridge and then follow the path as it winds up the hill. And here's where the hard work begins. So today's route's about 10 miles long, with 2,600 feet of ascent. And most of that is in the next mile or so, as we climb to the top of the high style ridge. It's um, well worth it though. The views are absolutely stunning. Today's video is unapologetically long because I really want you to experience it like you're there with me. And the reality of a walk like this is, it's hard work and you'll hear me huffing and puffing one because I've got angina but two because it is steep really is and uh, hard going but just so rewarding Worth it when we get to the top. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, it'll be cooler up there. I'm not going all the way up. Just in case you thought we were already at the top, I knew we weren't. <laughs> There's a tarn up there we go past and then another really steep climb. You begin to see why you want to come up here though. Look at that. <sighs> and so the well laid track through the woods gives way to this rough, rocky track. I'm not sure that I could run up this, to be honest with you. I'm quite clumsy, fall over quite easily. And uh, as well as being a physical exertion today, it was a mental exertion in that you're constantly thinking about every foot you place down where you put your foot. I'm in awe of these people that you see running along ridges and down scree. I just wouldn't have the confidence, I don't think, to do it. I guess it's practice. The more you do it, the better you become.
the more you climb, the more breathtaking the view gets. Winds round to the right, and you get a great view of Crummock Water. Another pause, another drink. Definitely need to be sensible today. It's very hot today. It's about 25 degrees C. I brought a bottle of water and my water filter with me. I wish I'd brought several more empty water bottles so I could fill them all up when we reach the stream. Water. We want to go up here, but uh, I, like many before me, I'm going to stop by the stream and refill my bottle. path runs along beside the stream which is flowing out of Libri Tarn which is our next stop before we make the steep climb up to Red Pike. Yeah, not so bad. Nearly at the top now, he says. <laughs> Have you run up? Uh, yeah, I'm up in high style. Yeah. From Keswick. From Keswick. By gum. <sighs> Keswick has got to be 12 miles from here, and he came via the ridge. You meet some superhuman people up here. Oh, wow, I'm in awe, frankly. Um, and of course, yeah, you get people who are following sections of the Bob Graham Round, for instance. That's not a million miles from here. And yeah, other types of people. You get people who are here because they want to. The challenge of, because it's here, you get people who are bagging Wainwrights. There are 214 Wainwrights, all bar one or over a thousand feet. And so they're along the ridge here, ticking them off. Personally, for me, 
I'm here because of the view. I just just find it awe inspiring, the view. And that's us next. Up there, steep climb onto the top, and then along the top. The climb to the top now is quite steep and it's a scree, rough track. I wish I'd brought some walking poles actually for this section and also for the descent, uh, would have made the descent a lot easier, which is also on scree. Never mind, I'll remember next time. only there. That's the top. 2.6 miles in. Nearly two hours to cover less than three miles. But it's uh, a hard three miles. Once we get to the top though and head along, it's much easier a breeze and thank goodness for the breeze do you remember when we were in the peak district and we went past that grade two listed chip shop in stony middleton that tom cruise has been to well he's been here too <laughs> I watched uh, the uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning film at the cinema and at the end he's on his motorbike and he goes off the edge of a cliff and then parachutes down to beside a lake and immediately I knew exactly where it was. It's here at Buttermere and I checked and yes it is. So uh, yeah, it's um, what a spot. I He couldn't have picked a nicer place to film. There's a web of spoons up here, right? There is, mate. <laughs> Three pints of wobbly bob, please. Two hours 15 to cover just three miles, or three very spectacular miles. I'm going to sit down, have a drink. There's no weather spoons are here, unfortunately. Pity. Um, and we'll just watch the clouds roll by for a bit and then carry on down the ridge. It's not quite all downhill yet. It's a little bit of a climb there, but it's not too bad. 
and then it's all downhill with fantastic views back down towards Buttermere. We'll see if we can work out where Tom Cruise jumped off on his bike. <laughs> I know where he landed because I recognised it. Over there. Over where? That's where he jumped off. That's it? where he jumped off, is it over there? Yeah, that high point there. Right. I was actually here that day. <laughs> Were you? Yes, I filmed him. Because I, I, I was at the cinema and then... Yeah. It, it was funny he, when he landed down uh, down near Buttermere. Down, I thought, oh, I know where that is. I've been there. He jumped, off, jumped off at that one there. When I did it, and I had no idea he was doing it, I just came up from what there was a windsock on right. the top, and he'd done it. And I got to Honest to Slate Man, and I've got a film of it on my phone. Actually, he came up Honest to Pass him and two other guys in a lorry. Yeah. Uh, and got into Honest to Slate Man and did a U-turn and went back down. I think that was a scene from, I don't know, it was a scene from the film. I'm not, I've not seen it, but yeah, that was two years ago. Well, there was a fellow a couple of weeks ago who jumped off it with a, with a hang glider. And landed right. in a gully and died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hungry thing glide. The glider forgot the glider, but he did the same as thing as Tom Cruise did. If you do come up here, make sure you take time to stop and just really soak it in. It's, it's just so stunning. Oh. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? <sighs> and so we're on the top. And I really could run the next section. It was smooth and grassy and flat, but it does give way to a rocky path quite quickly. Afternoon. This is more like it, nice and flat. Yeah. <laughs> After the climb. Enjoy this one, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so as we approach the Wainwright summit at high style, I've slightly missed the path here. The path is further to the left, but there's a nice grassy bit, which is very tempting. Actually, I think last time I came this way, I did the same thing. So we have to clamber over the rocks when we get near the summit at high style.
place to sit down for a drink and soak in a view. This view is going to stay in my memory for the rest of my life. And so we regain the path following along the ridge. There are a couple of paths marked on the Ordnance Survey map, one going down from here at high style and another a bit further down, but I just think they're too perilous for me. Personally, I would follow along the ridge as I do through to Scarth Gap by Haystacks and then just follow it down the hill back to Buttermere. The path wasn't quite so close to the edge. The RAF treat these hills and valleys like their own personal playground, We're zooming through in the jets at really quite dazzling speeds. I can't help but wonder whether Tom Cruise saw them when he came here to film, and whether that then inspired him in the uh, plot for the Top Gun film, where, if you've seen it, they have to navigate, uh, you know, travelling low through hills very similar to this. We get to see the RAF in a minute. Was it? Was he? No. Very easy to end up on a path created by a sheep or a stream. Fantastic. That's not work, is it? <laughs> that's, that's pretty scary stuff. I mean, they're going so, so fast and they're, they're pretty close to the edges, really. I mean, I, you know, I do know someone who used to be an in the RAF, was a 
pilot and he said they operate a big sky policy basically they just assume no one's in it, no one's in it. Here's where walking poles would have been useful on the descent. It's loose scree, it snakes down the hill, and uh, there is a path here to the left where you can cut off the corner, but as I say, I would not recommend it. So we get a better idea of what Tom Cruise did now. So he's gone off the top of there and parachuted down and landed on the track down here that we'll get to. Mad bugger. Wouldn't catch me doing that. Does it look familiar? Must be somewhere around here he landed. I'll leave it to you to <laughs> figure it out. It's obviously covered with bracken now, wherever it was. Nice easy walk now. We're just meeting this path beside the uh, beside Buttermere, uh, which is just a nice flat, easy path. Uh, so we just follow it down here and back across the, uh, at the end, back to the car. Oof. I'm nearly six hours in, <laughs> uh, just under eight miles. It really is uh, not an easy walk, particularly in my condition. Um, anyway, I'm going to head to the end drink about a gallon of water and then um, eat all of the food. I'm quite peckish and uh, yeah I can have something to eat. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, see you next time. Mm -hmm.